So Ismail is a senior lecturer at the Alliance Manchester Business School at the University of Manchester and he has taught uh, corporate um, uh, finance, uh, bank financial management, international finance, socially responsible finance and um, social, uh, environmental social governance uh, on both the school's uh, MBA and executive centre uh, programmes. And uh, Ismail's uh, teaching um, reflects uh, research um, uh, interest in financialization, uh, financial innovation, socially responsible finance, green finance, so things that are very central to what we're talking about here and the uh, exhibition themes as well. And um, Ismail has held visiting positions on executive MBA programs at Stockholm uh, School of Economics, uh, St. Petersburg, uh, Istanbul um, University, and the um, ESCP EAP Paris. And he's currently co leading a research program on green finance at the MS Mirian uh, International Center of Advanced Studies in Germany. Welcome, Ismail, and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Uh, with Irini, we, we have an a interesting project uh, called Money and Environment. Uh, so the idea is really to bring together uh, economists, uh, professionals uh, like uh, finance people uh, and, and uh, uh, NGOs to, to reflect on uh, uh, the kind of problems uh, that Ingeborg and, and Sandra illustrated uh, very well uh, in artistic uh, uh, terms. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll talk about those, those issues. So uh, I translated the title of this exhibition into uh, three uh, visuals. So this is money. Uh, I'm sure you all know the guy uh, with the <laughs> woolly hat, uh, Damien Hurst. Uh, but I don't think you would know the guy he's talking to, maybe you do. Uh, he's the uh, superstar of, of finance, Mark Carney. I'll talk about that. And obviously this is the project Damien Hurst calls the currency project, uh, uh, NFT. Uh, uh, but this is, this is how close money comes to uh, art. Uh, this is ruins, I'll come back to that. Uh, this is uh, Bora Badur uh, in uh, Indonesia. Uh, this is about uh, water, but different kind of water, rainwater uh, mastery. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to that uh, again because uh, ruins can be depositories of, of knowledge uh, for uh, various uh, purposes. And finally, the sea. Uh, because the, the way the finance people think about the kind of problems that uh, Ingeborg and Sandra were illustrating, oh, we have a solution. We'll find, you know, vertical oceans. <laughs> so we can continue to pollute them. <laughs> we don't need to clean them. Uh, all we have to do is uh, to create these vertical ocean. Uh, this is a serious project in Singapore. But the, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an academic, what bothers me is money is more likely to go to these uh, stupid projects <laughs> uh, rather than the kind of real projects that uh, Sandra and an Ingeborg uh, 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 showed us. Uh, this is, this is uh, 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 scary. Now, wh what I would like to do is, is uh, basically, uh, I mean, that's, that's the kind of uh, uh, research uh, I have. How do we get finance people financial institutions uh, uh, interact with artistic world to change their values and then calculations about uh, uh, environment, oceans, and, and, and water. Now here, the Carney speaks to an artist, uh, but this is about NFT and then money. Uh, so how do we get them to talk to artists about environmental uh, issues? Now, Carney is a very important person because he is uh, uh, the uh, uh, UN uh, special envoy uh, for, uh, 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 he has an interesting title that I'm going to, uh, so he's a UN special envoy for climate action and finance. And in COP26, he organized the financial world and announced that $130 trillion, I repeat, 
$130 trillion. Now, obviously, when you hear these numbers, it doesn't make much sense. But if you think that the U.S. economy, the biggest economy in the world, is only about uh, $20 trillion, so he's talking about the money managers, fund managers, and banks who control this amount of money. So they decide where this money goes to. So at COP26, he created a network uh, for uh, Glasgow Financial Alliance for net zero uh, to think financial sector uh, when they're making investments, the, the, the environmental uh, issues. So this is the power of finance, uh, but the, uh, uh, the amount of money they manage, the, the power they have, the recognition they have, so they have a, a, a but, but how do we get them to think in a way that, that, that uh, the, the, the money they spent uh, doesn't go to such silly projects, uh, but goes to more meaningful uh, projects? Now, we talk about the, the, the uh, image uh, Ingeborg showed about the uh, Hudson River, because the financiers in Manhattan, they see Hudson River. But the likes of Mark Carney, what, when, he, when he spoke to the insurance sector in, in London, he said, oh, a 25 centimeter increase in Hudson River yeah, will cause so much damage to the storms because the sea levels are increasing and we, we see the, so the insurance companies are paying now more for the uh, uh, weather-related damages uh, in, in Manhattan as well that the insurance sector will go bankrupt. <laughs> and then similarly, the bankers in London, they are more worried about what happens to the rise of sea levels, uh, River Thames, <laughs> because the city of London, where this $130 trillion of funds are managed, yeah, uh, will be, so the way they look at sea is very specific. Yeah, what happens to Hudson River, what happens to Thames River, but they're not interested about what is under. <laughs> Uh, 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 Hudson uh, 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 River. So the, 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 the example uh, Sandra showed how the Dutch you know, can uh, uh, live with uh, uh, you know, below sea levels, uh, so we don't need to care about uh, sea levels increasing, caused a big scandal in, in finance. Uh, one of the leading uh, managers of uh, these responsible funds, uh, uh, he was the head of uh, responsible investment at HSBC, one of the largest banks in the world. He said, as a banker, I don't care what happens to Miami in 100 years' time. If sea levels increase, well, the Dutch mastered the sea. They can live <laughs> you know, below sea levels, so we'll find a solution in 100 years' time. He said, my problem is how to make money in the next three months, <laughs> or how to make money in, in, in uh, one year's time. So this is very serious. The financial world cannot see more than next three months, more than one year, and, and, and that's a serious issue. And, and this very important person can say, I don't care what happens in 100 years' time. Science will solve problems. Now, this brings me to the ruins, because the way the, the economists and the finance think about science is science allows us to master the nature. Now, the work that I refer to when I'm discussing these issues is Michel Serre, a French uh, philosopher and a philosophy of uh, science and history. Uh, he, uh, uh, I mean, he, his work is on an environment. And then he looked at how the development of Western science uh, uh, grew in, in such a way that, that, that the science always looked at nature as a something that you can discover the laws of and then master. Uh, and that gives us the problem. <laughs> so the current you know, uh, anthropogenic situation we are in is based on that kind of science. So his view is we need to change our relationship with nature. We need to change our, our scientific thinking. So he proposes something called uh, pact with nature, coexisting with nature. And then he refers to the uh, ancient Greek philosophers who studied the flows of, of uh, so it's more of an Epicurean understanding of science and mathematization of physics than, than the, the kind of physics uh, that led to the Newtonian uh, 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 physics. So 
the, the, the financial sector tries to make itself a science like physics, i.e. we can master the, the, the nature and then we can create uh, yeah, things like this. <laughs> so if you give us the money, then, then uh, we can sort out the problem. So, uh, I mean, I'm not going to the other pictures. It says we can grow uh, fish uh, in an ecological way, sustainable way, uh, and, 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 and so on. But the Borobudur example is, is, is interesting because when the Dutch came to uh, Indonesia, when they saw this impressive temple, uh, which was built in uh, the ninth century. Uh, of course, it was in, in uh, 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 people have left, uh, it's, 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 it's in ruins. Uh, so the Dutch engineer tried to restore the temple. But the thing is, the, the, the mastering the North Sea uh, and, 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 and having engineering knowledge to create canals uh, in, in Holland is different than mastering the rainfall. Because this temple was built, because it rains a lot in this part of the world, and it can rain heavily, uh, had a very intricate drainage system. So the rainfall yeah, is 35 meters tall, yeah, goes all the way without damaging the, there are uh, 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 2,672 relief panels on this, uh, Buddhist uh, 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 stories, and there are 504 Buddha statues. So the, rain, the, the drainage system yeah, takes the water from the top everywhere to the bottom without damaging the uh, uh, 2,067 relief panels and 500 Buddha statues. And the rainwater doesn't seep into the tunnel. But because they didn't know that knowledge, when they tried to restore it, they damaged this intricate drainage system. So after 10 years, those relief panels start to get deteriorated and then and the paint started to disappear and the water started to seep into the temple. Uh, so it's taken a long time to, to discover that the, 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 there's a very intricate uh, drainage system because rainwater is different than uh, North Sea uh, flow water. Mediterranean Sea is, is different than a uh, 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 Pacific Ocean. Uh, I mean, from my own experience, uh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the Aegean Sea. We never have tides. So when I move to UK, when I see the tides, I said, oh, the sea is different. Uh, so you cannot swim the way you do, or you need to navigate the sea water uh, 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 differently. So basically, the... Uh, uh, the, 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 the financial sector is now empowered in, in many ways, and also the UN uh, uh, agreements made to channel money for environmentally responsible projects. Uh, I think there's a need to link the artistic world, the, the financial world, NGOs to, 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 to look at these serious knowledge issues that, that economists and the financial people uh, uh, are, not, are not really uh, uh, aware. So uh, the only concern, for example, Carney has is because now the countries have agreed to a net zero economy, so we will uh, keep the global warming one and a half centigrade above pre-industrial levels, his concern is how to make the financial system stable. So we don't have a financial crisis because Shell, BP, oil companies, they don't go bankrupt. And the banks who lend money to them, they don't go bankrupt. Uh, and that's a scary uh, thought. Uh, so hopefully we'll get them to uh, galleries, uh, museums, and these exhibitions like this uh, to, to uh, get a better understanding and then change their values and then thinking about uh, environment and, and water. Thank you. <laughs>